As is logical, every vehicle is designed to perform certain functions efficiently. In this regard, a pickup truck is built to tow a few tons, while a heavy-duty truck can move dozens of tons. When it comes to locomotives, these heavy machines are capable of transporting up to 150 tons with relative ease. Now then, thinking that these vehicles could switch roles is something simply unimaginable for most people, except for the Australians. Strangely enough, before the new millennium, Australian railways were amazed to see how a conventional truck operated completely normally as if it were a large locomotive. Although this might sound like an experiment at first glance, the reality is that the idea was implemented with the goal of finding an efficient alternative for light and short distance transport, achieving results that surprised both locals and outsiders. To begin this story, we need to go back approximately three decades. The launch of the new 1996 Western Star 4900 semi-truck marked a turning point for the heavy transport industry, becoming one of the most capable and durable trucks for tough work under extreme conditions. Its performance, advanced for its time, and the ambition of the railway company V-Line Freight led to one of these units being sent to Australia, though not without undergoing a few modifications carried out by Brandt Industries. For this unusual order, it was specified that a pair of single rear axles rather than tandem ones be installed. Additionally, a full Westinghouse train brake system was required as a complement to the truck's standard braking mechanism. Since this unit was not intended to operate as a regular road truck, a special superstructure was also requested to support its function as a locomotive. This meant fitting a steel platform along with the couplers necessary to attach railway wagons. The icing on the cake came in the form of a system called a road transferable locomotive. In broad terms, it was a pneumatic mechanism that allowed a road vehicle to also transport railway wagons. Essentially, four pneumatic pistons were integrated at strategic points to distribute the weight and lower special wheels for rail tracks. Today, these systems, known as high rail, are widely used and popular, but at the time, this was a true innovation. With all these modifications, the unit was renamed RTL-1, beginning operations as an initial test to evaluate the potential of expanding the fleet with at least two more units. At first, before the summer of 1998, the RTL-1 began hauling grain hoppers along a short stretch of railway track in the Australian state of Victoria. The intention was to study its behavior and test its flexibility when switching between road and rail. Since the goal was to use this type of unit on short rail segments that were nearby but had a distant crossing. Its ability to operate wherever necessary allowed this unusual machine to start taking on heavier tasks, gaining popularity during that same summer of 1998. However, a couple of years later, this peculiar truck was relocated to an unused timber line. The reason was that this solution was relatively lightweight, which allowed it to transport a handful of lightly loaded wagons while staying within the limits of both its diesel engine's capacity and the railway itself, which had serious structural problems that made it too fragile for a regular train to pass over, especially since one of the sections crossed a bridge over the Avon River. The efficiency of this transport method grew so significantly that, in its final stage, it was operating for at least three months, making between 4 and 15 trips of heavy timber loads daily. Sadly, the decline of this imaginative experiment began in January 2000. By then, the truck's sole function was essentially transporting timber, something that unfortunately changed when the bridge was reinforced to allow regular rail traffic again. From that point on, RTL-1 was left without a purpose and went inactive, ultimately revealing a complete set of disastrous shortcomings. Apparently, the RTL-1 experienced serious tire wear issues, requiring frequent replacements, which limited its uptime and drastically increased operating costs. Additionally, the single-wheel drive axles lacked proper traction on the steel rails. This drastically reduced its performance, as poor friction properties combined with a reduced weight made this truck significantly less efficient than any regular locomotive. 
On paper, this disappointed the company V-Line Freight, as they did not achieve the results they had hoped for. For this reason, an RTL-2 and RTL-3 never came to be, despite reports that the Australian company had initially ordered two additional units that were never built due to the apparent failure of the first model. However, this was not the end for the truck locomotive. Rather, it marked a new beginning in a different role. When V-Line Freight was acquired by Freight Australia, the sale included this peculiar unit, which was given a new image with a striking green color and a new purpose to serve as track maintenance equipment. This new role involved transporting ballast wagons as well as moving equipment and machinery for track repair and upkeep. Although this was far from the adventurous life it had previously led, its new purpose allowed the unit to remain in service for many more years. However, after Freight Australia was acquired by Pacific National, this iconic truck sat idle for several years at the South Guinan Locomotive Depot. During this time, it was rumored that, in 2009, there were plans to dismantle the vehicle, as it had once again lost its operational purpose. Fortunately, in 2011, the company Just Track purchased the unit to continue using it for maintenance tasks, extending its uncertain lifespan. Notably, in 2012, this truck locomotive was seen in use during the modernization of Adelaide's Gollard Line, briefly showcasing the power and innovation it once represented in the mid-1990s. Despite managing to stay active over the years, it sadly disappeared from the public eye after 2015, when it was last known to be used for transporting flatbed wagons along the southern Sydney freight line between Enfield and Leightonfield. Thus ended two decades of operation, earning its place in history as one of the key pioneers in promoting the integration and efficient use of what are now the widely adopted high-rail systems.